Hi everyone, welcome to the Value Inspiration podcast. My name is Ton Dobber and I'm the founder of Value Inspiration. The purpose of my company is to help business software companies rethink what can be to become remarkable again. The goal that I have in this podcast is to inspire new forms of value creation by sharing compelling ideas and stories about the potential that we can unlock when technology and people blend in the right way. So my strong belief is that we can think big and therefore we should. And doing so will help to create a better world for all of us. And this podcast is all about that. The guest of my podcast this week is David Semerat, co-founder and CEO of Kindest. There is a huge opportunity to bring something extremely like, intuitive and simple and effective in the hands of nonprofits because right now all the tools available there are focused on the large or nonprofit organizations that have big teams in-house. But actually the fun fact is that there is 1.5 million nonprofits in the US and 92% of them are actually small to medium size. And no one is really focused on those 92% of nonprofits. They you know, don't have a marketing expert in-house. They don't have a engineer in-house and they just didn't, there, there's just no tools available for them. So we decided to jump into the space and basically build a solution that is extremely easy, effective, and also free to help all their fundraising and donor management needs. We don't charge any monthly or annual fees. We don't take any cut from the donations and everything is just directly going to the nonprofit. This is David. He's a driven entrepreneur with more than a decade of experience in the software development field. He holds a bachelor's degree in economics and a master's degree in information technology from the Czech University of Life Science in Prague. He also studied at the Technische Universität München in Germany and the Universidad de Malaga in Spain. Besides that, he's a member of the Forbes Agency Council as well as the Young Entrepreneur Council. In 2004, he co-founded SDRV, a one-stop mobile app and development shop working with top-tier startups and brands. In addition to SDRV, he spun off several companies. The Game, acquired by Spark Networks in 2014, followed by Search, the world's third largest gay social network with over 3 million users, and Order, one of the world's fastest food delivery startups. David's work has been featured in the Wall Street Journal, Forbes, Wired, and TechCrunch. What triggered me to invite David to my podcast was his most recent startup Kindest, and here is why. Just as nonprofits rely on the generosity of their donors, Kindest business model relies on optional tips. It is what allows Kindest to remain completely free for all nonprofits that need them. In our podcast interview, we explore the underserved market for small not for profits and how the basic needs of donors, transparency, are even today still not met. We also discuss Kindness business model and how exactly that business model gives them the ultimate incentive to do exactly what's right for their ideal customer. And this pays off. By listening to this interview, you will learn three things. Firstly, that creating a cool looking app doesn't always mean it will take off. If people are not waking up in the middle of the night around the idea of your solution, it likely doesn't solve a valuable and urgent problem. Secondly, that momentum starts when you've created a solution that gives your users their focus back and allows them to do exactly what they're good at. And thirdly, why it is key to avoid conflict of interest by aligning your mission and your business model. If the two are optimally aligned, it will create your flywheel for growth. So David, thank you very much for joining my podcast today and making time available on what I think is your busy schedule. Sure, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I mean, I got introduced to you by someone else, by Claire, Claire of uh, CEO of All Voices, and she spoke highly about you. So hence my invitation. And I've been, I've been looking at your website, and there's a couple of things that fascinated me. So I hope this is, I'm not hoping, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is going to be an interesting conversation between us. But before we start, I always want to give a little bit of a taste about who you are. So if you describe yourself in, in three words as an entrepreneur, what words would you use? In three words? Yeah, or one word. <laughs> I would say driven. That would be uh, the one word I would go for. I can see something already in the link to uh, what you do as a company. So yeah, your company is called Kindest. And that's, I mean, fascinating name, by the way. Thank you. And really good with regards to the area that you're targeting, the not-for-profit space. And what I read on your website, you have a free fundraising platform. Now, before talking about that business model of free, 
Can you explain what is the big idea behind your company? Sure. I used to run for 17 years, I used to run a STRV, which is software engineering and design company. And I get it to about 200 people. And then a year ago, I decided to step down and focus on our internal innovation projects. And since we had nonprofit organizations that were getting in touch with us and wanted some you know, redesign of their website or improving of their fundraising processes, I kind of looked into the space and we saw that there is a huge opportunity to bring something extremely like, intuitive and simple and effective in the hands of nonprofits because right now all the tools available there are focused on the large or nonprofit organizations that have big teams in-house. But actually the fun fact is that there is 1.5 million nonprofits in the U.S. and 92% of them are actually small to medium size. And no one is really focused on those 92% of nonprofits. Those are like, you know, nonprofits that raise less than $10 million. They, you know, don't have a marketing expert in-house. They don't have an engineer in-house. And they just didn't, there are just no tools available for them. So we decided to jump into the space and bring all the knowledge that we have from working with companies like Hallmark and Microsoft and basically build a solution that is extremely easy, effective, and also free to help all their fundraising and donor management needs. Well, wow. yeah, I started on your website. It's like a free fundraising platform and it requires no coding. And that's now, now I understand why that is such an important thing because these small not-for-profits don't have people that code and also likely don't have the budget to kind of to hire someone that, that does exactly that. So exactly. what is the solution in, in a nutshell? And So we have a button pending solution for nonprofits that basically allows you with only two lines of code implement an interactive donation button that hovers on the top of your website and it can navigate donors extremely intuitively and very effectively to uh, the main goal of your nonprofit website, which is raising money, raising funds. And once the donor gets there, they see a really well breakdown campaign page where you explain the impact, you know, it has social elements where you can see other people who've been donating. And you can see that once you contribute to this campaign, you will not be just, you know, just someone with money, but you will actually be part of this movement, part of like this either like hyper local or global cause that actually can make a difference. And you make donations and then the nonprofit gets your information and they can work with you with our system throughout the entire year. They can send you updates and keep you informed about how they actually, what they actually have done with the money that you have donated. Okay. So it's also that, that whole accountability part that is incorporated in your solution. Indeed. Yes, it is. So people can follow what you, you know, where exactly that money has gone. Interesting. Yeah, transparency, yeah, I mean, I've been... transparency is very important for sure. You know, there is the worst thing that I always say is when you go to a CVS and they ask you, would you like to donate to charity? And you have absolutely no idea where your money is going. Yep. You don't even know the cost properly. And you feel like you're just throwing your $10 in a black hole. So we want to be quite the opposite of that and basically provide the donor extreme transparency into how nonprofits are using the funds. And we are also pushing the nonprofits to specify exactly like what they need the money for. So I'll give an example. We have a nonprofit on the platform called Jojo Bear, and they are giving out teddy bears to children that are long-term in hospital to kind of help them manage their their emotions and like, you know, that it might be a little lonely. So they bring them the bear and there's a story behind the bear. So what we have done with them is that if you give $25 a month, then you basically provide five teddy bears for kids who would be lonely otherwise. And it is like a real tangible impact for the donor that you can understand and you know that the money is going to be well spent. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's very important. And the transparency is, is an interesting idea to, uh, to bring back. So what is the opportunity if you get this right? I mean, have you already seen the impact of this alive? Yes, we have over 300 nonprofits on the platform and they're actively using our product. We get so many uh, thank you emails from our clients that we save them time, that we save them, you know, most importantly money because most of the solutions out there, they're charging anywhere from one to ten thousand dollars a year and on top of that they're taking cut from donations whereas you don't charge any monthly or annual fees we don't take any cut from the donations and everything is just directly going to nonprofit. that's something that only 
nonprofits appreciate, but also the donors. We did a study recently and asked the donors why they enjoyed giving money through kindness. And they said that they really appreciate that the nonprofits are fiscally responsible to research a free solution that is also very donor friendly. Yeah. So that's, I mean, uh, let's talk about that, your free fundraising platform. But so how have you organize that? I mean, at the end, I believe you've done really well in your life, but I mean, you need to earn something, right? <laughs> Yes, that is correct. So we rely on the generosity of donors. And as uh-huh. a part of every transaction, the donor has an option to give us an optional tip. And we actually have seen that over 80% of donors are giving us a tip, which is sort of offsetting the cost of running this business. Let me make a small interruption here. David just revealed some of his trade secrets, namely to blend a solid product with a no-brainer business model. Blending those two together raises the value factor for your customer and provide you with differentiation that is highly defensible and as such, hard to beat. Creating defensible differentiation is one of the key traits remarkable software companies master. And there are multiple ways to achieve this. It all starts with understanding where you stand. So for those of you that want to know where to put the focus to create defensible differentiation, simply do the test. You can find it on valueinspiration.com slash remarkable index. Back to the interview. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at the end, that's if you ask people, then they typically, yeah, they are, they are generous and they provide part of the funding as well. And of yeah, course, when that is balancing we, out. Yeah. You know, ahead. we explain it. We explain it there that we are a free platform and we get only funded through the generosity of the donors and people like that mission and they are supportive of that. That's why they leave us a tip in the end. What makes me curious around that example, simply because it's, it's done in such a way, it's really up to the donors whether they are supporting this, yes or no. Does this also create more of a side effect? I mean, I always, I mean I'm talking a lot about remark- uh, being remarkable and when things are remarkable and I think your model is remarkable, people start talking about it. So do you see that it gets promoted from mouth to mouth? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We get referrals every day that come in through you know, happy nonprofits using our platform. And so that's actually the main source of our growth. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, fascinating. It's a completely different model. I, mean, I, haven't, I don't have, well, I haven't talked to anyone on the podcast that had such a model and I like it actually. <laughs> it's, it's turning the whole thing upside down and it actually creates almost a viral effect around it. I was still recently speaking to, who was it? I think it was the CEO of Voicea. And they also had sort of a viral effect inside their solution. And it, it reminded me of that, hence the question. So how you said you started this company about a year ago, right? Yeah, we started a year ago when we focused full time on this, on Kindest. But before that, it actually was born out of a passion project that we started April last year. So it, overall, it's about a year and a half. It was a passion project first. And then when I saw the potential, I actually took three. So we, are like, we used to be four co-founders of SCRV and three of us are actually doing this full time. I also took another co-founder she was uh, working at STRV as well so now we are four co-founders and our team has recently grown to eight people soon to be 10. Okay that's getting out I mean you're proving that the business model works and that there is a market for this and I mean talking about the 1.5 million not-for-profits that are without solutions that's a good way to go I mean is this limited to just North America or is this going global at the moment? We are focused mainly on the U.S., but we have recently opened up the gates for some Canadian nonprofits and one in the U.K. as well. So we are going to go global eventually, but at this point, the main growth is happening in North America. Yeah. Well, I'm always interested to understand a little bit about the whole innovation journey that you went through. So if you if you think about this whole journey from April last year to, to where you're right now and having a product that is actually already alive in with 300 organizations, what do you believe was, was the one thing that, that made it sort of a viable solution? Well, we started originally being focused on donors. We started as a platform that was allowing donors to donate to a nonprofit. It was an app that you could download in the App Store, and then you could choose the nonprofit that you wanted. What we realized is that people actually don't have a problem to solve. They, don't, they are not waking up. Be, you know, nope. sweating, not knowing where they're going to donate their money. And because it's not a real problem, 
people are not proactively looking for solutions that would help them solve it, which means that people are not looking for an app that would help them donate their money. And how it happens is that people have a need for community. People have a need for impact. Everyone wants to be important and helping. And they just don't know that they could do that through nonprofits. So it's up to nonprofits or not up to nonprofit organizations to actually carry the mission out and explain it to the donors and get them to be part of it because donors don't know yet how amazing they would feel once they would actually be part of something like that. That's why we actually changed our focus from being donor focused to being focused on nonprofits first. But eventually, you know, we want to attract the donors to the platform as well. So if a nonprofit organization would join, then not only did they would get great and free software to use to manage their donors, but also they would already be able to tap into our existing supporter base and expand the number of donors that they currently have. So you've created a kind of a platform that, that has all the donors in one area and like that network is always growing. Yeah, that is, that is our goal. Like, you know, we are extremely sensitive with donor information, so there's no way yeah. we would ever be passing any donor information to, you know, different, between different organizations. But when you go to kindness.com, you can already discover like some featured causes that we have on the platform. And our goal is to promote them more and more. Interesting. Okay. So this, yeah. So I mean, all these donors that, that have signed up once through, well, through donating, they will be constantly be informed about other areas that could, they could make a difference. That's not ex- exactly how, how you have it planned out, but the best part about signing up once is that uh, next time you go and donate to a nonprofit that's, on our, that's using our platform, you can do it with a single click because you are already yeah. logged in and that saves time and increases the efficiency of donation. Okay, but you're talking a couple of times already about creating a movement. Is that, I mean, how does that work? As I said, like people don't know yet how well they could feel if they were helping, you know, there is so many subscription services that you're paying for. You're paying for Netflix. Now there's like Apple TV Plus. There is Disney that recently launched. Then you are paying for so many like, you know, gadgets and like things that you don't really need and are not going to enrich your life. Whereas if you would be donating $10 a month, which is a fraction of what you spend on nonsense a month, you could actually feel much better about yourself and you could you could actually be part of, of something great in your like local community or in terms of like global things that you believe that should be taken care of and are not by the government because government only can do so much you know especially you know a good example is climate protection like the trump administration has withdrawn from the paris treaty and now it's up to the american people to actually do something and up to american organizations to do something on their own because they're not forced by the government to do so and that's a, good, that's a great time to actually think about, hey, what can I do personally to help this cause if I believe that this planet needs help? So what I'm saying is that we just want to make it easier for people to be involved and feel great about them helping. Okay, okay. I know I understand. So have you done any specific things into your solution to help that conversion? I mean, people go to a particular website of a not-for-profit, they see your widget, I mean, how, have you done any special tricks or I mean, have you found out that one, doing it one way or the other helps get the conversion up? Absolutely. You know, as opposed to one uh, nonprofit organization that only has limited resources, we are working with hundreds of nonprofits and we are able yeah. to run experiments and test our software on massive scale and which yeah. is growing like every day. And that is allowing us to actually be able to come up with the most effective things that donor, you know, are interested, the donors are interested in, and that it simply works for the optimal conversion. We also work with a couple of professors from UCLA and Dresden School of Business that also is helping us to work on the platform and improve it. And our goal is to actually use machine learning and AI to actually be able to spot the trends and spot the donor behavior and what they're looking for in order to bring all that expertise to nonprofits for free. Okay, yeah, that's where it really starts to scale at the end. But I agree with you. At the moment, you have so many customers on so many different websites, you can, you can start to spot what works and what doesn't work better than anyone else. Exactly. I mean, if you're looking at it from an isolated, isolated perspective. I mean, one of the questions I normally have is what is your, 
what is your biggest challenge with regards to growth and creating momentum? Maybe that's the wrong question here because at the end, well, I mean, it's related to selling it. But maybe it, well, I can ask you the question around creating momentum. I mean, how do you, what have you done specifically to, to get the ball rolling? You know, we have started very small. We started working with a couple of nonprofits to make sure that what we're creating is right on par with what nonprofits need. And also, you know, starting with the donors, seeing what they liked and what they didn't like. And right now we are, well, I can't say that we are selling a software, the software, because when you're giving out something for free, you can hardly call that selling. So I would say making sure that more and more nonprofits actually can take advantage of this opportunity to save thousands of dollars that they would otherwise spend with, you know, competing software that's not even like targeted and like well done for them. That is actually the, I would say the, you know, big hurdle where we would be able to scale our impact and increase the efficiency of organizations. You know, the worst thing that we have noted is that when you are working in a nonprofit as executive director or someone like, you know, out of the organization, like instead of you being worried and then focused on the actual cause that you are, that you're solving or you're working on, most of your worries actually comes from not being able to be effective in fundraising and being worried whether you'll be able to fundraise enough money that year to cover all your expenses and and salaries and like, you know, be able to create all the impact that you wanted. And uh, that is very sad. So what do we really like the mission of our company is to bring back the time and money into the hands of nonprofits and let them really focus on the cause and give them extremely simple way how they can very transparently communicate with donors and tell them about the impact and make everything run on autopilot so they can really, that everyone can really be focused on the things that they are good at and they should be focused on. Fascinating. That's good. That's really a good, good use of, uh, of technology here. Thanks. Yes, well, one of the things, I mean, I think I told you in the beginning about that effect that I'm writing a book and it's called The Remarkable Effect. You've run a couple of companies, you said. I'm always interested to hear from entrepreneurs like you what they believe the secret to run a, or to create and to also sustain having a remarkable software company. So w- what is your, your big thing here? You know, as a part of SCRV, we have worked with over 300 founders from like really exciting companies like Caviar, Tinder, Class Dojo. And what I have learned is one thing, which is that even though like these companies are working in the era of so- producing software, it's still about people. And at this point, before we get into maybe the new era where people will have less impact on businesses, everything is so human-centric that I believe the most important thing is to have a leadership that is just nice and inspiring. You know, like working for someone who you don't you know, really respect is not going to bring the company great results. Like, it can temporarily work on a short term, but like long term, yeah. when you look at culture of companies, it always end up in a way where the culture is going to, if the culture is bad, it's just not going to work and the shares are going to go down or employees are going to be uh, rebelling. So yeah. one thing that I observed, it's extremely important, like how the leadership is done. And what I love about Claire and her platform, All Voices, that actually introduced us is that she's bringing a tool to help leadership understand and be aware of the culture and if there's like, you know, any potential wrongdoing or misconduct. So I would say, I just wish that all the leaders would be very inspiring, will not have any internal issues. And my recommendation to all the leaders out there and all the management would be that they should work on themselves primarily to be able to be someone that other people can have respect for. Nice words. <laughs> and I can only agree with that. I completely agree. I've, been, I've, I've experienced on b- both sides and it's always worked really, really well when, when there was a leader in front of you that actually took you on a journey and took everybody on a journey. So going back to, to what you've done so far, what are, you, what are you most proud of seeing? What is an anecdote that you say, hey, wait a minute, now, it, now I can really see that the impact we are hoping for is actually yeah, coming to fruition. It comes down to the missions of the nonprofit that we work with. You know, we are just the middleman. Like, you know, we are not the ones who are changing the world. We are just allowing amazing people to change the world. 
And it, nothing makes me happier than seeing actually our nonprofits being able to, as I mentioned, deliver those, you know, teddy bears to kids in hospital or educate, you know, young kids from, you know, underprivileged areas to on self-confidence and how they should stand up for themselves. And we have much more serious causes that also tackle some, you know, global diseases and threats to humanity. Some of them are focused on the global warming or anything that has to do with sustainability. And yeah. me seeing that those nonprofits thrive is for me the most rewarding thing. And as I said, like, you know, our business model is we are selling or we're giving out the software for free. And the only way we can ever make money or, you know, fund our operations if our nonprofits and our clients are successful, successful. Yes. So their success is our success. I'm really happy that it's 100% aligned with our mission. Yeah. And that keeps you going because everything you add to the solution that makes them more successful, that, that gets more donors to pay and, and, and see that, that's where your, if the 80% tipping continues, that's where you're going to thrive as well. Nice. I think that's a, it's a beautiful example of a, of a business model that, that has the right KPIs, so to say, to succeed. Yeah, you know, Ton, it's very important to align those interests. You know, we are fundraising, we have money from investors, and the, our for-profit model is based around revenue, and our mission is based around impact. And there's very few companies that actually have those to align because yeah. for us, you know, we know that the more good we do in the world, the more we also, the more love we can get back from the donors, you know, being, being thankful and appreciating that just like really happy about being so lucky to work in such an organization that, that doesn't have a conflict of interest and is really, is really aligned when it comes to our success and our client success. Nice. That's inspiring. So what is next for you? What is your greatest aspiration from here? I just want to keep doing what we are. Our team is soon to be 10 people and I am really enjoying working out of our office in Santa Monica. And I just wish that we'll be able to help more and more nonprofits. At this point, you know, we know that we are going to make everything we are doing better, constantly improving the software, as I mentioned, using like all the data to improve that. And also we are coming up with the new features, like soon we are going to launch event ticketing. And there's, there's like many more like small or bigger features that we are going to offer. But those are just like minor, minor things because the big picture is we really want to connect the world of donors and nonprofits and create like one cohesive unit where people will feel appreciated for helping. They will feel great about themselves that not only that they're consuming so much and you know, from this beautiful planet we, 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 we live on, but also that they can give back. And not only that they're getting so much great things delivered to them and like so much, so amazing, so many amazing, great services, but they can also give back and they can help people who need it and help animals, help like, you know, the planet. And like that's connecting that into like one system where it is not going to be difficult to find the way you can be engaged. It's going to be very fun and rewarding. That's our you know, big vision that I wish we'll be able to fulfill. Nice. Well, talking about getting engaged, where can people go to find out more about Kindest and to say hi to you? The best way would be to go to kindest.com. If you're a nonprofit organization, you can sign up for an account. Or if you're a donor, you can also discover some interesting causes around you. And where can people find you? Is this, is this the same domain? Yeah, I'm on Instagram, davidsummerat.com, or I'm on Twitter, just my first name, my last name, David Summerat. And if someone is interested in chatting directly, happy to talk. My email is david at kindness.com. Thank you very much. This was truly inspiring. I mean, I'm always looking for new, well, new ideas that you gave me a couple of them. I like your course. I like the, the way you set up your company and how you've actually aligned the mission and your business goal into one that's really strong. And I think a lot of companies can, can learn from that. Thanks, Don. I appreciate the kind words. That's a pleasure. Thank you very much. And I hope my audience enjoyed it as much as I did. I have a question, though. Please share what your thoughts are about this episode by making a comment where you played it today. And if you value the podcast, 
please share it with other tech entrepreneurs on a mission that you have in your network. Other than that, thanks for tuning in to this podcast. I had the honor to speak to David Semerat, co-founder and CEO of Kindest. The goal of this podcast is to share compelling ideas and showcases to inspire what can be when technology and people blend in the right way. It's my strong belief that too much focus is put on automating people out of a process, in other words, cutting costs, rather than scenarios where the unique strength of people are augmented with technology to change the established rules and to deliver a value that was unimaginable before. So with this podcast, I want to make a contribution to change this, to create a broader awareness of what can be, to accelerate the adoption by bringing together you, a tribe of like-minded people and organizations, And lastly, to accelerate the initiatives and solutions that could be created because one idea inspires the other. So if you know about stories that are worth sharing, please send me a message. Building the momentum all starts with revealing the ideas and that starts with you. If you want to have more information, read my blogs or obtain information on working with me, just visit me on my website, valueinspiration.com. Thank you for tuning in. And you could do me a big favor by rating the podcast or provide me with your feedback. I'll see you shortly in a new episode.